नमस्कार माई सेल्फ प्रतीक इन दिस सेशन वी विल डिस्कस अनॉर्मलीस ऑफ फर्स्ट नॉर्मल फॉर्म लेट अस स्टार्ट दिस सेशन इन प्रीवियस सेशन वी हैव डिस्कस दिस स्टूडेंट टेबल वी हैव ऑलरेडी नॉर्मलाइज इट बाय यूजिंग फर्स्ट नॉर्मल फॉर्म एंड हियर यू कैन सी दैट इन एवरी रो कॉलम कॉम्बिनेशन वी हैव ए सिंगल वैल्यू इट मीन्स दैट देर इज नो रिपीटिंग ग्रुप so data is in first normal form here we are storing the data of courses where we have informations in the form of course code course name and teacher name we are also storing the data of students who are doing these courses for this we are storing the roll number name system used hourly rate and total hours spent by students on that particular course whenever we have a relational table our first task will be to give a thought to identify the primary key for this table can you identify the primary key of this table take your time and try to identify the primary key of this table i hope that you have identified the primary key correctly you can clearly see that in this table course code is repeating same way roll number is also repeating it mean that course code individually cannot act as a primary key and same way roll number cannot also act as a primary key in this table the primary key is the combination of course code and roll number since primary key is the combination of course code and roll number it also mean that we cannot insert null into course code and roll number and this constraint will pose lot of problems during insertion of data in this table let us discuss that further Let's suppose we have just launched a particular course C5 and we want to store its information. Here C5 is the course code. Let's suppose the name of the course is SQL and the name of the teacher is PBH. We want to store this information into our database. Since we have just launched this course, it mean that there is no corresponding student in this course. It means we have to store null in roll number name system used hourly rate and total hours since we have already discussed that primary key is course code and roll number combination it mean that we cannot insert this record into the table because primary key is course code and roll number and we cannot insert null into the primary key so from this discussion we can clearly see that we cannot insert the data of a course in this table who has no corresponding student and this give us first insert anomaly for this data set here we have clearly mentioned that in this data set we cannot insert the data of a course without students in simple word we cannot insert the data of a course having no student now let us discuss another situation where we want to insert the data of a student without having corresponding course so let's suppose this student 110 want to take break from that particular computer center it means he still is the member of that particular center but he has not registered any course maybe due to examination or maybe due to any other personal reason in order to store its information again we have to put null in course code course name and teacher name because student has not registered in any course as we have discussed primary key is course code and roll number so we cannot insert null in course code it means insertion of this record is again not allowed this gives another insert anomaly which state that we cannot insert the data of a student without course so we can clearly see that this database suffer from insert anomalies we cannot insert the data of a course without student and same way we cannot insert the data of a student without course but sometime it is important to store the information of course without student and to store the information of a student without course in the database but in this database we cannot do so because primary key is course code and roll number combination so this is the insert anomalies in this particular data set now let us discuss about update anomalies you know that during update operation we have to manipulate the data we have to make changes in the information about a particular attribute so let's suppose we want to change the name of the course so here we are running a course on visual basic and we want to change the name of this course to advanced visual basic 
What do you think? Is it possible to update it? Yes, it is possible to update it. But the problem is that we have to make multiple update operations. Since C1 course appear four times, so we have to update that particular course four times. And if we forget to update one time and update it three times, the data will become inconsistent. So here update operation need to be performed multiple times. And this is the another anomaly of this data set. Can you give a thought that how many times we have to update the information of a course? For example, if you have to change the name of C3 course, then how many times we have to change it? Then we have to change it three times. So we can conclude that whenever we have to change the information of a course, we have to do this multiple times, which is equal to the number of students studying that particular course. So in case of C1, it is four times because there are four students who are registered in that course. But in case of C3, it is three times because there are three students who are registered in that course. So we can conclude that in this data set, we have update anomaly because whenever we have to change the information of a course, we have to do this multiple times. For example, when we need to change the name of course C1, we have to do this four times which is equal to the number of students enrolled in this particular course. Now let us give a thought about changing the information about student. Now let's suppose you want to change the name of rule number 100. So how many times we have to make that changes? Is it one time or is it multiple time? Again you can see that rule number 100 appear multiple times. So we have to make multiple update operation. And this is equal to this is equal to number of courses in which that student is enrolled. Since 100 is enrolled in two courses, so we have to make changes in its information two times. So this is another update anomaly in case of student information that whenever we have to change student information, it requires multiple changes, which is equal to the number of courses in which that student is enrolled. For example, in case of rule number 100, we have to do this two times because that student is enrolled in two courses. So we have discussed about update anomaly that whenever we have to change the information about a course, we need to make multiple changes, which is equal to number of students studying that particular course. And same way, whenever we have to change the information of a student, we again have to make multiple changes, which is equal to the number of courses taken by that particular student. So this is update anomaly in this particular data set. Now let us give a thought about delete anomaly in this particular data set. You know that whenever we delete a record, the whole row will be removed from the data set. So if I told you to remove the data of C1 course, then it will remove the full row of the C1. It means it also removes the information about roll number, name, system used, hourly rate and total R corresponding to that course. If you ask to remove the information of a course, you will not only removing the information of a course, but you are also removing the information of students who are taking that particular course. So this is the anomaly of delete operation. When I told you to delete the information of a student like delete the information of a particular roll number, then you have to remove the full row. So it also causes deletion of the corresponding courses information. Let's discuss that in little bit more detail. So in this example, let's delete the information of a course code C1. So when you delete this information of a course, it also causes deletion in the information of student information and it also causes removal of information of roll number 100, 101, 2 and 3. Now, we have also removed the record of these four students. But this deletion is worst for a student who has only registered in C1 course. This is not worst for roll number 100 because still the information about roll number 100 is available under C2. Still you can find out the information of roll number 101 under C2. But this is worst for 102 because 102 is only taking one course and you have removed that course. So we will miss the information of 102 in the whole data set and you have not asked to remove it. 
you have been asked to only remove the information of a course but due to mistake in the database we have also removed the information of 102 and same way we have also removed the information of 103 and we will not able to find out this information from the remaining record so we can conclude that whenever we remove the information of a course it also removes the information about students but this deletion is worst for a student who has registered only in that particular course here i have listed this anomaly that deletion of course information causes deletion of student information too and this problem is worst for a student who has enrolled in only one course and that course has been deleted now let us consider this situation here we are removing the information about roll number 100 so when we remove the information of a roll number 100 it will cause the deletion of information about course c1 and c2 by removing the information of student we are also removing the information of course but still this is not worst because still you will be able to find out the information of c1 for roll number 1 2 and 3 and same way you you will able to get the information of c2 for roll number 104 5 and 101 now let us consider the situation when i asked you to delete the information about roll number 109 then the information of course c4 will be removed and this is worst for that particular course because in this course i have only one student and that student has been just removed so it means that you will not able to find out the information of c4 from the remaining data set so we can conclude that whenever we delete the information of a student it causes the deletion of course information too and this problem is worst for a course which has only one student and that student has been deleted so when we remove 100 this is not worst for c1 and c2 because we have some more students in those courses but if we remove the information of 109 this is worst for c4 because in c4 i had only one student with row number 109 and we have just deleted that information so we will not able to find out the information of c4 from the whole data set so this is about the delete anomalies so we can conclude that in this data set we have insert update and delete anomaly we cannot insert the data of a course without student and same way i cannot insert the data of a student without course we have update anomalies updation on course information require multiple update operations which is equal to number of students in that course same way updation of student require multiple update operation which is equal to number of courses in which that student is enrolled in delete when we remove the information of course it also remove the information of student and when we remove the information of student it will also remove the information of course this deletion is worst for a student who is taking only one course and that course has been deleted same way the deletion of student information is worst for a course which has only one student and that student has been removed so this is all about anomalies in this data set and the solution to solve these anomalies is to apply second normal form so in next session we will discuss about second normal form and we will try to solve the anomalies of this data set thanks for watching this video mm -hmm.